week and uh, and the first week. So this is our third uh, Monday, by the way. This is our third time. And so far, we learned how to connect our microphone to the audio interface. We learned how to uh, set the rec perfect recording levels. And I'm go uh, I'm going to share you the link if you want to check out the previous workshops. Uh, that way, you can find uh, you can learn from scratch. Mm -hmm. So this is where we left off. Vocal recording takes. So audio interface, so this is where you're going to record your vocals. We'll talk about the proximity effect. We'll talk about the microphones. We talk about the placement of the microphones. We talk about hit makers are using what type of uh, vocal boots they're using. We talk about all these details. And now we're at the point that finally we pressed record. Finally, we're here. Step by step to perfect take. What is a take? We call it take. A, Audio you capture, we will call it take. So if you some if somebody says that, okay, let's do another take, that means just record again. And recording resolution. So your recording resolution, when you connect your audio interface to your DAW, DAW means digital to audio workstation, which means your uh, program you use, like Ableton, like Logic. So when you're connecting your audio interface, you're going to set it up. You're going to introduce this audio interface to your uh, DAW. And finally, this is where you are. You need to set the recording revolution, uh, re resolution, resolution. Look at this. Which one is more clear to you? Which one looks more clear? The 3X? Yeah, this one looks more clear, right? Yes, exactly. So when we are recording vocals, we need to keep the resolution at this quality. 24 bits, 40, 41 kilohertz for vocals. This is normally essential. And if you want, you can keep it on 48. I can show you how to set it up on Ableton quickly like this. So once you connect your audio interface to your DAW on Ableton, how, here's how it looks like. You just go on the settings, preferences, a, I don't know which DAW you're using for the new people. I don't know which one you're using, but so far we have Logic and Ableton. This one, I'm just, uh, this, for this for this one, I'm just giving an example from Ableton because that's what I have, uh, and we covered for different DAWs uh, during previous uh, workshops. So this one, uh, I just set it up to 48. If you're if you want to record sounds for TV then use 48. If you want to record vo vocals, use 44. And 24 is recommended. So you can find the same, same information on Google, but it's everywhere. So until you put the pieces together, here, is it, here it is. I put the pieces together for you already. So this here's how it looks like, 41. Uh, this is how you're, you're going to set it up. And Brie, you're using Logic if you need help to set up uh, this, just let me know and I'll stay with you and I'll help you to set it up. And 48, Thank you. Her, no problem, 48 kilohertz is recommended for TVs and movies. So not everybody has to record vocals. Some people want to record some other things. So if you want to record some other things, like some sound effects, some like uh, nature sounds, then uh, for TV, then you can pick 48. That is the resolution. It's very important because setting a high resolution for your vocals is important because we're trying to fix all the problems right at the beginning. That way we can get top quality takes. This is what we're trying to do. We don't want to just sound like we, are, we recorded this album in our bedroom. No, we don't want to sound like that. We want to sound professional, right? This is how you go professional. Okay. So... Okay, you just set up the recording uh, resolution on Ableton. Uh, I can set it up if you're using the different DAW. I can help you set up recording resolution. Look, look how it looks. So high resolution, you're gonna look better. You're gonna sound better. Original resolution, you're gonna look sound okay. Compressed or a normal resolution, you're not gonna sound too clear. That's why recording resolution is very important. Keep it on 40, 41.1 for vocals and 24 bit recommended because it's going to be higher. Okay, let's go back. Power of multiple takes. Okay, finally, after three weeks, we hit the record button, right? 
finally we're recording our vocals. Great. So let's do another one. Let's do take two. Let's do take three. Let's do take four. Let's do take five. Power of multiple takes. There is no perfect take. What is the solution? Record again. You're going to hit the record again. You're going to take, you're going to record, you're going to record one more time. Finally, you find your comfortable levels. What is that? So far, we have warm up takes. So you're warming your vocals up, you're warming up finally, and you're making sure your recording level is between minus 10 and minus 18 average, and maximum is minus nine. So we already covered this part, but we can totally go over those uh, if you want. Uh, but we covered these parts uh, during the previous uh, workshops. So this is a good take because normally its dynamic range is not too much. It doesn't have too many peaks. And this one is too quiet. Remember this one? It was like minus 22. And this is too loud. This is something we cannot use. We don't use the too loud part. So we're going to make sure our recording level is correct. That's the first thing. Finally, we have safe input level. How do we know that we have safe input level? Check the meter. So you have logic, right? Let me just size it up. You have logic. Just go on your channel, check your levels. If this is 7.4, done. Don't even, don't even use that take. This is too high. Just make sure you are peaking around minus 10, between minus 10 and minus 18. Just make sure this is not too high. This is where you start shaping your vocals. This is where you get to put the quality into your vocals. This is where you start cooking those amazing vocals in the studio. So you go to Ableton, click on it, click on the meter. It says minus 6.5. It's still high. Just lower it, lower the gain. You go on Pro Tools, same thing. Just check your meters and check, check your peaks, check your peak levels. And then finally, we recorded something. Look at this. This is what I recorded. So here is my vocal take and check your peaks. Make sure you stay on the safe levels, minus 10, minus 18. If you, if some of your peaks are around minus eight and minus six, you're good. That is it. Uh, that is fine too, because we can later tame those peaks. Just make sure you are mainly staying on the safe levels, which is uh, minus 10, minus 18. This is how you get professional vocals, ladies. This is how you get professional vocals. Most of the time, people are doing bedroom recording and they just record it too loud. That's the reason they don't get the quality of the radio ready track. They don't get the quality, not because of the, they do not have the tools. It's because they are recording too loud. There's no room to mix. How is, how is, is the mixing engineer is going to mix that? Because it's too loud. It's not going to work for us. So we can tame the peaks later. Just make sure you are mainly staying on the safe levels. Never go above zero. Don't see the red light. What is the red light? When you go on the meter, when you're recording, if, if you see the red, red here, red light, it means that do it again. It doesn't work. Okay. So you check your peaks. You're not peaking too high. Great. So dynamic range. What, what is the dynamic range here? So you, this is your highest point, minus five. And this is your lowest point, minus 18. So you don't have to be an engineer to learn everything. Just know that don't go too high, don't go too low. That's all you need to know, ladies. So engineers are studying like years and years to learn about this, but you don't have to learn about it. Just know that don't go too high. So I change it for you. Let's make it six. <laughs> Let's make it four. Four is gonna be too much, too loud. Just use, you know, just maybe like, yeah. Let's keep, go back to five. Just don't record too much, too high, uh, too loud, and don't record too low. That's it. So pick a part of the song. So when you start start recording, to create a faster workflow, because this is gonna take a lot of time. When you start recording, it's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna take maybe two, three hours, and you're gonna get tired, and you're gonna be like, okay, I don't wanna do this today. I'll do it tomorrow. Because why? You're tired. You don't have a faster workflow. You need a faster workflow. That's why what you're going to do, just pick one part of the song, pick the bridge part. So I pick the bridge part, I hit on record and I record this part. Here it is. I have my first take. We're still on take one. <laughs> we still have a long way to go. Okay, record four more. But there, same part, same part, bridge. We keep recording the bridge, ladies. 
record it again, record it again, record it again until you find best four takes. Record more if you like until you feel warm. Keep recording. Try with your head voice. Try with your diaphragm and chest voice. So vocalist, if you are a vocalist, you probably already know the difference. So when you're using your head voice, uh, it's different than your chest voice. So your chest voice is going to be stronger. So you're going to see a bigger wave here. But for your head voice, you're going to see like slow, smaller waves. It's going to be, it's going to look smaller. But for chest voice, you're going to see this bigger, look at this. Look at this big fat wave. This is big fat means that chest voice. So it's different. So you record chest voice. You record one more time. You're like, okay. I don't want to go away. And then you record like very strong. Uh, you record it more passion. I don't want to go away. Something like that. I'm just giving an example. I'm not a vocalist, but I did work with vocalists. So that's how I know all this stuff. Chest voice, head voice, different. Record it again, record it again. Because why? You're going to comp them later. You're going to put them together later. Chest voice, wave will be more fat. Uh, head voice, wave will be smaller. And now we have some takes recorded. What is next? Comping. So comping is a skill. Comping is a sk skill of splice, cut, and pace. What does that mean? You find the best parts, you put them together. Okay, so here is the part that I really like this part. Okay, I keep this one and I keep that one. And I have probably 15 takes here. <laughs> probably 15 takes over and over again. I sing the bridge part one, two, three, four, five, and I pick the best ones. Comping is a skill. You feel it and you do it. So coming is a skill, just definitely check out this guy's videos, Prince Charles Alexander. He is one of the best in the industry. So he is really a super professional and he was also my teacher in Berkeley. And vocal production and evolution of a pop song, Prince Charles Alexander. So he's, he has really good videos about vocal production. He helps you to record everything from scratch and I'll sh share you the link guys so you can just uh, take a look at how he's getting it done. So vocal production, this is a good vocal production video series. So you can just go on YouTube, type vocal production part one and Isotope, I don't know if you know Isotope, uh, Isotope is a company is a company and they, ha they have plugins for almost everything. So you can just go on Isotope's website or you can just go on YouTube, type Isotope vocal production and you're going to see this guy. And this guy has a video set, one, two, video one, video two, video three. You can check those out if you want. He doesn't give much details on those videos, uh, but, you know, I try to cover those details as much as I could. Anyways, so comping is a skill. Again, take one, verse one, chorus two. Let's say I'm recording this bridge part. And take one, I hated it. Take two, oh my God, terrible, I don't like it. Take three, okay. Take four, maybe I like the take four, so I'll just put it here, put a sign. So this is how professional uh, professionals work. But you do not have to work, in a, uh, you do not have to do it, uh, go to a music studio to get it done. You can do it at home. You can say, that, okay, I like this part, I like this one, I like that one. You can write them if you want. Or if you're working with a vocalist, you can totally use this as, as an example. This is called vocal uh, comp sheet. So in professional environment, in industry, engineers call it comp, comp sheet. So what it does, it, it helps you to pick the best parts. And believe me, that is the most important part. Picking the best parts, you're done. You're 70% done. Once you get your recording levels uh, correctly, you're 50% done. Once you pick the best words, let's say, welcome to the verse. Please listen to my song. Let's say I said song and I don't like that part. I just remove it. I just go here, take another part and uh, put them together like this. So now it sounds better. And this is called comp vocal comping. These are professional techniques, but you can totally apply all these 
to your home recording sessions because otherwise your recording session is going to take hours and hours and hours and you don't want you're not going to want to do that ever again you're going to hate it if you're organized at least if you know what you're doing it's going to be easier for you look at this comp sheet this is an example engineers do this all the time so we don't get to see this much but engineers do it all the time in the studios so if comping is a skill comping is a feeling you naturally know what to cut what to paste it is your song ladies nobody can do this better than you who's gonna do it better than you are you gonna hire a, a vocal product producer i mean they they char charge so much money this prince charles guy he's charging so much money if he wants to come to the vocal uh, studio with you he's gonna charge you so much money why do you need to pay so much money you can do it yourself this is the technique you're just gonna uh, record it over and over and over again, and you're going to pick the best parts. So engineer input. So I saw this somewhere on, online. It says recording several full takes and comping afterwards never worked for me. When I record singers, I just make them re-record re the part until we're both happy with it. And then we move on to the next part. This is how professionals do. And you can do exactly the same thing. You don't need an engineer to do that. Work with sections. Let's say I pick the intro. I start my song. I'm going to start with the intro. I'm going to record it over, 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 and I'm going to comp. And I'm done. And I go to verse. I'm going to record it over, over, over. And I'm going to comp. Uh, so you're going to work with the sections. Working with the sections. Another example to work with sections. So verse one, verse two. These are just, you know, a little bit more advanced stuff too detailed you don't need to know too much detail just know that just work with the sections to make it faster for you to get those for, uh, tracks finished again example i guess this is like a famous song called swala so you still working with the uh, sections uh, this these are all uh, okay arrangements so if you want to go into the details with those we can always go okay let's say I'm recording chorus part. I need to bring some more intensity. What should I do? I need to record some ad libs. I need to record some doubles. I need to record some harmonies. And we're going to get into all those one by one. But first, make sure you get at least one good comp. Where is that? One second. I'm uh, trying to find it. Okay, here it is. This is what all. Uh, this is what I need. One good comp. So, okay, I'm going to go back to this. Uh, slice, copy, paste, try again. Slice, copy, take, uh, paste, try again. Take breaks. Come back with fresh ears. Taking breaks is very important. Because why? Do not listen over and over again. Because I, I, I see this, this is happening too much. Because most people, they record a part and they just want to get it done. They're like, okay, I want to get it done today. It has to sound good. And they just listen. They end up listening the track over, 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 over again. That's a mistake. Listening the song over and over again is a mistake. Your brain will get tired. Your ears will be less responsive. Repetition is a strong technique for songwriting, not for recording vocals. Don't do it when you're creating the song. Your ears will get used to it and you will start liking it, even if it doesn't give the correct feeling. Given the correct feeling is comping skill. That's why I'm saying comping is a skill. But who's going to do it better than you? <laughs> That's the most important thing. So do not listen over and over again. Look, first time, meh. After a few repetitions, I like the song. After more, oh my God, I think I like the song. I think I did a great job. And you ended up uh, sending your song to the record label. And record label is like, mm -mm, nah, try again. So that's why, because you, you keep listening to the same thing and you start to like it after. So try not to, try, try to take breaks. That's very important. So even in psychology, it's called mere exposure. So if you listen it over and over again, our brains typically decide that familiar usually falls within this not dangerous category. That's why we are exposed. When we are exposed to something repeatedly, we'll end up liking it more. This is a very important topic that most of the time People do not mention much, but congratulations, you made it. Look at the stakes. It says take four main 18. This means I did like 18 takes to be able to get this one file. One file I tried 18 times and finally I got my thing. 
Here it is. Congratulations. Good comp. Thank you. Happy comping. Sorry, ladies. Was it a little too long? I'm so sorry. I'll keep it shorter next time. Oh, that was 